today we're going to be talking about velocity and other rates of change. So the instantaneous rate of change is our derivative. So that's how we defined our derivative. Remember, I want you to know that derivative, that definition. So when we say rate of change, we mean instantaneous rate of change. So find the rate of change of area with respect to the radius. So I'm looking for the a dr. So that's our derivative. Now I'm evaluating the rate of change when r equals 4. So all I have to do is plug in 4, and I get 8 pi. Now if r is measured in inches, and A is measured in square inches, what's our appropriate units for the ADR? Well, the units on A are square inches over the radius, which is also inches. Now our application having to do with velocity. So the instantaneous velocity is the derivative of position. So the derivative of position is our velocity function. And speed is the absolute value of velocity. So our speed is the absolute value of the derivative of position. Acceleration. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Okay, so I look at them like a ranking. You have position. You have the derivative of position that gets you velocity. When you look at the second derivative of position, which is the first derivative of velocity, that gets us acceleration. Okay, in this accompanying figure, we are given our velocity function. So this is V of T. Okay, particle moving forward. So that's when your velocity is greater than zero. So our velocity is greater than zero from zero to three and from five to eight. Now notice how I included the end point, but I didn't include any other points where at five or eight or three because that's when your velocity is equal to zero. So you're either moving you're neither moving forward nor backward. So backward is when your velocity is less than zero. So our velocity is less than zero from three to five. And that's it. Speeding up. Remember, that's the absolute value of velocity. So when that graph is increasing. So remember, the absolute value of velocity, let me draw that in. would look something like that. So I need to know when this graph is increasing. Well, I'm increasing from 0 to 1, from 3 to 4, and from 5 to 6. And just so you guys know, all these are in interval notation. Slowing down is when the absolute value of velocity is decreasing. So that is from 2 to 3, from 4 to 5, and from 6 to 8. So same graph, just a bunch more questions with this. Particles acceleration positive. Okay, so that's when the derivative or when that velocity is increasing. So I'm increasing acceleration being positive from 0 to 1, and then from 4 to 6. Negative 2 to 4, because our velocity is decreasing, and from 6 to 8. zero 
from one to two, I have a straight horizontal line. My slope of my line there is zero. And from eight to 10, now hopefully I'm gonna remember that 10 is an endpoint, so I include that point. In this part, we are doing, we are asking when does the particle move at its greatest speed? Remember, speed is the absolute value of velocity. So I'm gonna draw in my speed curve, basically all of the y's of our velocity curve that are negative are gonna become positive, reflecting essentially across the x-axis. So in red there we have our speed curve. When does the particle move at its greatest speed? Well, the highest value is here at four, and that is from one to two that is at four and at six. Okay, same one, it's particle standing still. That means when velocity equals zero. So my velocity equals zero from eight to 10. In this example, we have a particle that moves along a line. So think about a particle moving along a number line. So that its position at any time t equals zero is given by a function where t is measured in meters, or I'm sorry, where s is measured in meters and t is measured in seconds. You need to find the displacement of the particle. So what's my position for the first three seconds? So to find my position for the first, or to find the displacement, not just the position, it's where I end up minus where I started from. It's not just the final position. S sub three ends up being negative three, three. Um, S sub zero is eight. So our final position is, I'm sorry, our displacement is 11 meters. And make sure if I give you units, you give me units. Now this part of the example, we're asked to find the average velocity of the particle during the first five seconds. So average velocity is the slope through the line S of five minus s of zero over five minus zero. So s of five in this case is three, s of zero is eight over five, that simplifies to negative one meters per second. Instantaneous means derivative. So our velocity function, which is the derivative of our position function, is equal to 2t minus 6. So then I find v of 5, and that simplifies to be 4 meters per second. OK, particle moving along the line. S is measured in, OK, so same piece. I don't know why I was rereading that. Find the acceleration. So acceleration is my derivative of velocity. Remember from the previous slide, our derivative of our velocity was 2t plus 6. So the derivative of that is just equal to 2. Since I have nowhere to plug in a t value, my acceleration is just 2, and it's meters per second squared. Describe the motion of the particle at what times does the particle change directions? Okay, so particle changes directions when your velocity equals zero. So my velocity equaling zero, I did that wrong, it's minus six. You know, I did this when I was doing the answers too. Minus six. This should be a minus up there too. I don't know why I did that. I did that when I was working through the solutions. So at t equals three, 
seconds. So describing the motion of the particle. Okay, what's my initial position? The particle starts at an initial position at 8 meters. From the interval of 0 to 3, the particle is moving left. Because velocity is less than zero at t equals three, the particle changes directions change is directions. And it moves right when and it moves right for t greater than three because v of t is greater than zero. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Please make sure that you fill in the Google form that is right below this video.